Time for another Dark Tower video. So at this point in the series, I'm just, I was trying to do like spoiler free to spoiler, and I'm just going to go ahead and give a spoiler, spoiler warning up top uh, for these videos, because even, I, even though I don't know what I'm, what I'll really spoil uh, necessarily, but I'm far enough into the series that pretty much anything I say is going to be a spoiler for something somewhere. So we're just at this point up top, spoiler for the whole series. If you really want a review slash number for this book, then I would say both personally and objectively, I feel like this really comes in at a good old nine. I really do. I think it's a good nine. There are a lot of people who will tell you that this is their favorite book, and I absolutely can see why. Um, I, I can, you can say that for most of these books, though. So anyway, getting into the wastelands. So what do we have here? Now it feels like we're moving. Now we're moving. This is, we're really doing something here. You know, we're done setting up the world. We're done with drawing the three, or actually not entirely. But, you know, we're done with all of the setup, and now we're really... Now we're moving. This, 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 now we're into the meat and the bones of the story. It feels like we're doing something and we're going somewhere. The gunslingers are training. Roland is losing his mind. We're getting little bits of lore as we go. They're setting up tension. You know, Roland losing his mind. And just the little, the little bits with the, with the, with the shooting the robots and the bear and the, you know, getting stuck in the tree and, yeah, you get your little bits of, not only do you have your tension, but you're you're getting your little bits of Stephen King just being completely gross every once in a while with like the snot and the the fluids and the, which will not be the last time in this book or any book where he really leans into some shit that you're just like, yep, yeah, that's gross. That's really fucking gross, dude. Anyway. And I've mentioned that there's there's the genre mixing before where I think I said he had a sci-fi fantasy and horror and all these different genres. And instead of picking one, he said, I think I'll just take a little bit of everything. I forget how I said it. But he's we're really leaning into it now. We're getting, you know, now we're getting bits bits of that lore that I was talking about where we're leaning into, you know, you're 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 like that the world was filled with magic and then the magic was dying. So the magic was actually replaced by like cyborgs and giant robots to sustain what was being sustained by the magic but the magic was waning so we replaced the magic with technology now that technology's dying and and it's not like the technology is dying so the magic is returning to the land no now the technology is dying now there's nothing left you know it's like that's that's the situation that we find ourselves in in this world, or at least that's what's slowly being revealed to us. And it's just great. It's wonderful. The, I mean, not, it's not great that the, that this shit's bad, but it's great in a world-building and storytelling sense. It's just really good. It's definitely a step up from the last book, and I'm sorry for all you drawing of the three purists out there, but this one's definitely better. So back to what I was saying, it, but, you, but you've got your, your cyborgs and your dying magic, and but you're mixing in haunted houses and demon circles, which when those start hitting, those are hitting. But at the same time, this is King's bread and butter. He is a horror writer, or at least that's how he made his name. So when when he starts to lean into the demon circles and, and the haunted houses is when he feels like he's really hitting on all cylinders. Maybe just because he's more comfortable. I don't know, but it's in his wheelhouse. It's in your wheelhouse because that's what you like to read if you like King. But yeah, so he's he really feels like he's firing on all cylinders there. But actually, this whole book feels like he's firing on all cylinders. But there's a couple bits where you're like... Where you really feel it. Now, while we're on the topic of like haunted mansions and being back in New York, let's talk about being back in New York. I couldn't help, even though I will say in this book, the being back in New York stuff 
felt much more relevant and much more necessary than it did in the last book. But I will, I can't help, but when it gets to that point in this book, I can't help but still have a little bit of an eye roll moment like, oh my God, we are back in New York after just spending an entire book in New York. So granted, like I said, it feels much more relevant, much more necessary this time. And he doesn't waste any time. I mean, you are there for a good chunk of pages, but it doesn't feel wasted. It doesn't feel drawn out at all. You feel like you're really moving right along. You get a, the pertinent information, maybe a little extra because that's kind of how King does you. He'll flesh everything out. He's not going to, you know, <laughs> in the name of character, but whatever. Jake also just feels like a much more natural part of the story than Eddie and Susanna ever did. Like, they almost feel tacked on, right? Or, or at the very least, a little bit out of place. More so than Jake does. And I'm not saying that they are tacked on or out of he just feels like he fits much more comfortably inside of the story. They feel like they're always floating on the outside. They feel, and I and I know that that's kind of the point because it's a, the, uh, they were drawn from another world and we're blending these worlds. So they feel like an outcast in this world while Roland feels like an outcast to the group. You know, there's a bunch, it, which and it creates wonderful dynamics, but somehow Jake just feels like he fits more neatly into the story than they do to me moving on but back in midworld so we get this wonderful inclusion of river crossing for lack of anything to really say about it it's just it's just a nice fun little break it's a reminder of just how monumentally important these gunslingers were at one point in time just the sheer reverence that they have being in the presence of something that's supposed to be extinct, but something that held as much grandeur as as his title should or would have before the world moved on. It's not necessarily new lore, but it's it's a reinforcement of something that you've been told already that you get to see in a in a in a new way. And it's short, it's sweet, it doesn't waste your time, and it feels so good as an inclusion to the story. Then we move right on to Lud, and oh my. I mean, I don't want to just go through the story story bit by bit, beat by beat, you know, but this book just clips right along, and it hits so many beats, and every beat that it hits is so good and so well-timed, so well-placed. You get Lud, you get Gasher. Gasher's just the worst, and he's got more of that bodily fluids, blood pus, whatever is seeping out of his sores or whatever is grossness going on while he's dragging Jake through the city. And I remember the first time reading this that um, I was actually almost frustrated. I was a little frustrated. I was irritated almost because we spent the whole last book not having Jake. And then we spent the whole first half of this book getting Jake. And as soon as we get him, He's gone, and he's kidnapped, and I was I remember being frustrated as a reader, like, ah Both in a good way, you know, because books, that's tension. He's doing his job, and he's doing a good job of it. And just frustrated in general, like, oh, darn it. It felt like manufactured tension almost. And this time around, I didn't have that problem at all. I actually enjoyed it way more this time around, at least that, the kidnapping and the chase scene part of it. I much more enjoyed that this time in a reread than I did on the first read, which, interesting. And and the whole thing culminates, oh gosh, I love it, in the scene where it's like all this tension is built and Jake's in the lair of the bad guys. Roland's basically outside the door and we got to get the door open. We got, we got to get Roland in and we got to figure all this out. And it just, I don't know why, but it, you had just enough time with him on the beach and him being all jacked up and sick and feverish and he, we haven't done much like you know he's been training new gunslingers and he's been this and he's been that so roland's been not hasn't had a really a minute to shine so when you get to the scene in in the lair when it's like get the door open get the door open you know get get roland into the room right because we gotta we gotta save jake and then he gets in there and it's just like pop 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 and it's over and you're like 
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I kind of forgot just how crazy awesome Roland is. I had pl more than enough time to forget just how insane he is. It's so satisfying to read. You get there and you're like, oh, yeah, that's right. Eat that, TikTok man, you know, <laughs> or whatever. You know, he's really moving now, but you get Blaine. And I don't, I, to me, he, he was fine. Um, he was fine the first time. He was fine this time. I have nothing against Blaine whatsoever. But, boy, he's a big part of this to some people's head space. You know, they, they really, I'm like, have you read The Way Sense? They're like, oh, Blaine. And I'm like, that's what you got from that book? <laughs> like, you know. The last little bit with 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 the talking train. I don't know that that riddles people, and it's fine. It was a wonderful inclusion to the book, but it wasn't to me. It wasn't the. It's not the 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 defining point of the book for me. I guess is what I'm saying, and it never was. It wasn't the last time, and it wasn't this time. It's good. It's just not that it moment for me. But you get Blaine, and you get all of that, and it does set up a. One of the w most wicked mic drop cliffhangers of all time. Whether you like, <laughs> whether you like cliffhangers or you hate cliffhangers, and I can only imagine what it was like back in the day when this was, you know, a thing, because you had to wait like eight years or something ridiculous to get the next one. Whereas I just put this book down and picked up the next one, both the last time and this time. Actually, I'm waiting more time in between books this time just because I'm doing them one a month than I did the first time around. But that doesn't change the fact that it's such a wicked, just next level move uh, for better or worse. It is next level cliffhanger. But there's other sl little sly things in there that you don't necessarily, you know, like, like, like the TikTok man and his death and then uh, what's even worse people are like oh the bla the blaine's a cliffhanger thing i don't think so well i mean it is it really is but what's worse for me than blaine i couldn't care less about blaine walter shows up for like a page just to pick up the tiktok man and kind of dust him off like we have work to do and disappear and i'm like what? <laughs> like, we have what? And then he's just gone for the rest of the book. And I'm left at the end with the cliffhanger. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, they're being riddled on a train by Blaine. And I guess that's supposed to be the cliffhanger. But my mind's still stuck 50 pages before going, yeah, but where's Flag? Where's, where's the, what'd he do? Why, he, what's, what's he going to do with the TikTok man? Like, there's my cliffhanger because I was so... I don't know. He's back. Like, you know, Walter's back. This is our first time getting a taste of Walter since the first book. And you get like a page and a half. Now I'm chomping at the bit, wanting to know what Walter's doing. So to me, that was the that was the more painful aspect of the cliffhanger. And it wasn't even technically the cliffhanger. And I will, real quick, before it's over, I will say, if I don't bring up Oi somebody's going to be mad because boy oh boy is he just the fan favorite to end all fan favorites for, for the dark tower series i can't think of a bigger a bigger fan favorite in the whole series honestly everyone you ever talk to that's read the dark tower oh my god they want to go on and on just bang on forever about oi and i th and and he is just charming it's uh it's surprising just how charming and i think it's just a testament to just king's ability to just write in general because there's so many little animal companion characters uh that i just i it's not my thing not that i have anything against them but it's just not something that i'm like oh it endeared me to that book but there's something about Oi, and he's, he is. He's just such a charming little creature that even I that uh, get get sucked up into some of these Oi scenes, and it's just like, boy, he's just a charming little shit, isn't he? But anyway, where does this fall 
in your list of, of, of Dark Tower books? Is it your favorite? Do you hate it? Least favorite, worst, top, bottom? Where does it go? So anyway, thank you for coming. And I'll see you guys next time. Wizard and Glass.